As we read the gospel records, we read eyewitness accounts of the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. In a sense, the gospels are just the beginning of Christ's work. The adventure continues in the book of Acts. In this study with Scott Pauley, we consider the continuing work of Christ through the Holy Spirit, who works through the apostles and the New Testament church. Now, let's get in on the adventure. The book of Acts is both transitional and foundational. Now, in its transitional uh, nature, it is unique because uh, you're not going to reproduce the day of Pentecost. You're not going to reproduce the the first years of the early church. Uh, That is very special, and that's why it's recorded for us in this book of history. Uh, At the same time, the book of Acts is foundational to all of the church age, which means that Though the circumstances may change, and though the culture certainly has changed, the character of the church has not changed. Uh, There are foundational principles, first principles introduced to us in the book of Acts uh, that continue and are to be applied in every nation and in every generation. We've come in our study to the end of Acts chapter number 2. What an exciting chapter this is. The day of Pentecost, and what a day. Uh, But I would point out to you that it does not end with the day of Pentecost. Instead, it simply begins with the day of Pentecost. Let's pick up in Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse number 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Now, this is such a beautiful summary of what happens when the gospel shows up. Friends, I'm going to tell you, when Jesus comes to town, he changes everything. Every heart and every home that has Christ is different because the Lord Jesus brings his beauty and his power and his wisdom and his glory into the lives of those people. Now, as you look at the closing verses of Acts chapter 2, you get a little picture of some of the continuing responsibilities when people get saved. In other words, these are the duties of Christian workers. These are the duties of the church. These are the duties of those who want to see the work of God advance. See, in the early verses of Acts chapter 2, you have men filled with the Holy Spirit standing up, witnessing, preaching, teaching, Peter giving the gospel, and now you have a host of people saved. Could I just point out to you that that was not uh, the end of the story? That simply is where the Lord set it all in motion. I fear sometimes that uh, we, we look at salvation solely as a decision. May I say, the Lord Jesus is not after decisions. He is after disciples. The Lord does not uh, simply send the gospel out so that people can say a prayer and feel better about heaven someday. Instead, he brings his character and nature into their life so he can change us right where we are today. Now, there's some things that are not our job. It's not our job to build the church. I hear people talk about building a church. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, that he would build the church. The Lord is the one who adds to the church. Don't miss that. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. But there are a few things that are our duty. These are our responsibilities. Let's point them out. They're all right here in these verses. First of all, it is our responsibility, first, for reaching. We're to reach out to people with the gospel. Don't miss the fact that these 3,000 souls would not have been saved if someone had not been speaking the truth of Christ to them and giving the gospel. Their response is not our responsibility, But our responsibility to get the gospel out is something we must take seriously. I want to challenge you to find your place and do your part in reaching someone with the gospel. 
learn how to present a logical uh, presentation of the way of salvation. Uh, Use your own personal testimony. That's the greatest thing you can do. Tell your story, how the Lord Jesus saved you. Uh, Get out where the people are. Look for people. Uh, Be alert, spiritually alert to people who are searching and who are who are seeking some direction, and give them the gospel. Uh, work with the people that you already have around you. Start with your own family and friends and coworkers and schoolmates, but reach out to somebody with the gospel. Then, and not only is reaching our duty, but teaching is our duty. Don't miss that. Because the Bible says immediately, as soon as they uh, were reached for Christ and baptized, in verse 42 They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So now we have them learning the truth of God's word. Uh, They're being taught. Uh, The rest of the passage talks about the meeting daily. What were they meeting for? Certainly for fellowship. We'll talk about that in a moment. But they were meeting to study the word. They were meeting to pray together. They were meeting to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Great Commission does not stop with go and teach. It says go, teach, baptize, and teach again. Uh, The first teaching is the teaching of all nations. All people need the gospel. The second teaching is the teaching of all things. Those who receive the gospel then need to be instructed in the way of God more perfectly. And so I would challenge you, seek to go after someone, reach someone for the Lord Jesus Christ, and then by the grace of God and with the help of the Lord, endeavor to teach them what you have been taught. You see, everything is to reproduce after its own kind. So if that's true, what do disciples reproduce? More disciples. Seek to reproduce yourself in the life of someone else. Uh, People must be born again. Agreed? Yes. But after the new birth, you don't stop. Birth is where the life and growth and nurturing begins. And so our duty first is reaching, then is teaching, then is caring You see how much of this passage is about caring for those who are being reached and being taught? The Bible says in verse 42, there's fellowship, there's breaking of bread, there's prayers. Uh, In verse number 44, they're sharing with one another uh, and ministering to those that have need. In fact, in verse 45, they're sacrificially giving uh, to minister to the needs of those around them. In verse 46, they're continuing with one accord. Remember, we started with one accord. Now we're continuing with one accord. That's the great challenge, isn't it? They're breaking bread from house to house. They're eating their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. This is beautiful. Friends, this is what a church looks like. This is the way it's supposed to be. It's a family. And so a person is born again. They're nurtured, and then they're treated like family. This is the caring aspect the prayer support, the encouragement, the accountability, the fellowship. And so our responsibility first is reaching, then is teaching, then is caring, and then don't miss the last one. In verse 47, it's praising. I love it. It all leads us back to God. Every soul that is reached is to the praise of God. Every lesson that is taught to the praise of God. Every disciple that is developed to the praise of God. Every bit of care and love and unity in the church to the praise of God. Praising God. God. Friends, that's our duty today, to give him praise and to give him glory. That's why Christ is building his church, and that's why he saved us. I can tell you this, God will always do his part. The question is, will we do ours? I want to challenge you to take these four duties seriously today. By the grace of God, reaching, teaching, caring, and praising, may we take our place and do our part. In the book of Action, And seeing the God of action, may we be people of action. And the Lord use you to do what you can right where you are. The same is true today as it was then. The Lord is at work in this world through His Holy Spirit, drawing people to Himself. What a privilege as God's children to be a part of what God is doing in this world today. If you'll visit enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find many resources that will equip you as you walk with the Lord. You will find previous podcast series and episodes, full-length Bible messages, and a topical search engine that will aid you in studying Bible subjects. If this podcast is a blessing to you, we hope you will share it with a friend. Be sure to join us on the next episode of this continuing adventure through the book of Acts.